looking at specifically how we make white wine. The first step in the fermentation process is to crush the grapes. So crushing the grapes, I always think the word crush is a little bit of a misnomer, misnomer because it sounds kind of harsh. I think of like crushing a bug or just being kind of harsh, but crushing is really just breaking the grape skins to release the juice from the, the grapes. We're just getting that juice outside of the grape skins. So that is the first step in our winemaking process. Once the grapes get to the winery, they'll be crushed. The next step is pressing. When we're making a white wine, we don't want any color and we certainly don't want any tannin in our wine. So tannin is that kind of bitter astringency that you see in a lot of red wines. Think about the last Cabernet that you had and you felt that mouth drying sensation. We don't want that in our white wines and tannins found in the skins of the grapes as well as colors found in the skins. So the pressing process is important for white wine because we immediately want to get rid of the skins. The only thing we want for the fermentation process is that fresh juice from the inside. So the pressing process separates the juice from the skins of the grapes. So we're just left with the juice. So we'll put all the grapes into this basket press. This is a more kind of older way, although there are still wineries that use presses like this, but you put the grapes in there, that lever will press down and kind of gently squeeze the remainder of the juice off of those skins. I like to use the analogy of like a washcloth. In order to get your washcloth dry, you have to wring it out. So the pressing is like that wringing out process to get the rest of the, the fresh juice off of the skins. Then we move on to our fermentation process. Fermentation can happen in a tank or it can happen in a barrel. I mentioned the tank and how it's useful for sort of temperature control. Um, and using a tank also doesn't impart any additional flavor in our wine. So the only flavor that will be developed are just the flavors of the grape. So Sauvignon Blanc will develop different flavors than Pinot Noir. But if you're using an oak barrel, oak will impart flavor in the wine. So if you're fermenting a Chardonnay, for example, in a barrel, then you're going to start to get some flavors associated with oak, like spice, vanilla. These are some of the flavors that can be imparted in the wine in oak. So tank or oak, whatever the vessel is that the winemaker decides, it's really up to the winemaker which vessel they choose to use. It just depends on what kind of style of wine they want to make. The yeast will be added. And what happens when you add yeast? The yeast will feed on the sugar from that fresh grape juice and will turn it into alcohol. If the yeast is allowed to ferment all of the sugar that's present in the grape juice, this is how we end up with a dry wine. There's no sugar left over. The yeast ate all the sugar. If for some reason the fermentation is stopped before the yeast feeds on all the sugar, there'll be some sugar left over. And this is one way to make a sweeter style wine. That fermentation process is stopped early. We get rid of the yeast and we still have a little bit of that residual sugar left over. For Chardonnay, most of them are going to be dry. We'll learn about that in just a moment. So in this case of Chardonnay, the yeast fed on all of the sugar available to create alcohol, and then the fermentation is completed. Next, we have the maturation step. Now, maturation is another choice that the winemaker has. It can happen for a short amount of time in a stainless steel tank, or the wine can spend several months or even years maturing in an oak barrel. When it does that, you'll get those flavors associated with oak. The longer that the wine spins in the oak, the more you're going to smell and taste that flavor when you're tasting the wine. But the time frame really is just the choice of the winemaker. Finally, the wine is ready. It's matured for however long the winemaker decides. We're ready to bottle the wine. And after the wine is bottled, it can spend some additional time resting or aging in that bottle before it is released to the market, or it can be bottled and released to the market pretty immediately after. 
another choice of the winemaker.